Okay, so like most of you, I've been doing everything I can to. <laughs> so like most of you, I've done everything I can to keep my mind together while we stuck in the house. Random photo shoots with my wife, impromptu vlogs that I never actually edited, streaming Call of Duty on Twitch with some friends, and re-editing old photos, which I'm sure every photographer is doing that right now, just going back into the old catalog and doing a brush up of an old edit. So while I've been doing that, I thought to myself, hey, maybe y'all might want to take a peek into my process. So let's do that. What's good, creative family? It's your boy, Just Be Wise, and today we're gonna talk about Lightroom. And let's just start off with this. I, just like everyone else, still have some room to grow as far as where I'm at in my editing skill set. I still feel like I have some room to grow. However, I do think I've made tremendous growth over time. So I would like to at least give you a little peek into what I do and give you five tips if you're a beginner in this on how to like skip some of the stuff I didn't skip when I was really bad at this. But before we jump right in, all of these tips are gonna be in Lightroom CC 2020. However, technically you can use this wherever you edit. And also if you are gonna use Lightroom CC, then all of these tips will directly work if you're editing on your phone, tablet, or your computer. Okay, let's do it. Crop tool is your friend. Okay, so let's crop this beautiful image of my lovely lady. Um, I feel like here, I probably could have maybe stepped in another step or two. I have a little bit too much foreground here, so I wanna make her more of the focus of the image. So, and I think with this one, we're gonna do a one-to-one -one and just have her smack dab beautifully in the middle. Yeah, like, I like this. That's beautiful. Yeah, and that already makes a huge difference. If you look at the difference here to here, big difference before we did anything else. White balance matters. Okay, so here's an image that we've already cropped and we're on to my next most foundational step which is white balance. And the reason I feel like white balance is super important is because if you saw the color grading video I talked about, I feel like it's the same for video as it is for photos. You wanna check your white balance first before you start doing all of your other stuff because you can't go back and adjust your white balance. You need to do that ahead of time. So, cause that's gonna mess up all of your colors if you try to do stuff ahead of time. So here, we're gonna go ahead and touch the white balance. In Lightroom, if you come to the top setting right here, we're gonna skip over this part of it and come down to here. I kinda wish they had this part up, but it is what it is. We could work around it, right? So let's go ahead and close the light so we don't get confused. Okay, now there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can do it manually, where I can just warm her up, right? Or you can use any of the presets here as you see, first thing, if you do auto, first thing they do is warm her up and they have a bunch of different settings you can use. Now, I feel like one of the best ways to actually do this is you can use the color picker tool. So you wanna pick something that's white or neutral gray. So we're gonna zoom in, take advantage of this flower that's white. And we're gonna touch that right there. And as you see, it changes all of that for me. And then from there, if I don't like how it looks, I can go ahead and tweak it. Check that exposure, bruh. What we wanna do is come up here and we're gonna adjust the exposure as you see here. I purposefully wanted the light to fall off where as you look on the right side of her face, which is left to us in our perspective right now, but it is a bit too dark. So what we wanna do is raise the shadows a bit to kind of brighten it up. As you can see, it brings that in there. So I'm, I'm going ahead and max it out. All right, and I am gonna drop the highlights. Oh Lord, I adjusted the wrong thing. I'm gonna drop the highlights a bit to kind of even it out a touch. That's too much. Right about there. I'll 
okay and I am going to up the whites to bring a little bit of this color back the brightness back a little bit and we want to drop the blacks to add that contrast and now I usually will adjust the highlight shadows whites and blacks before I do anything with the exposure I typically don't like to do anything with contrast I could be wrong you know if you guys do it a little bit differently let me know in the comment section but um here I would like to brighten up the photo just a touch there I feel like now we, uh, let me tweak just a little bit more because I feel like this shadows can be a little bit darker highlights can come down a little bit more now let me see whites maybe drop you a little bit and blacks drop you down a little bit more yeah okay yeah now here is a base where i feel like i can kind of start working them colors ain't that scary bruh so now we are actually at the part where people like to put their own spin on things. So for instance, anytime you're using someone's LUT or preset or whatever, right? Essentially you're getting their likes in the photo. So like if they like very poppy colors, you're going to get very poppy colors. If they like very moody colors, you're going to get very moody colors. Now, this is where you can actually start doing this on your own. A little bit of practice and you'll be able to figure out, even if you do like it, I would say, take an image that you like, do your little tweaks on it, put their preset on there, and then try to recreate it yourself using the color mixer. Now I'm gonna go into a quick overview of how to use it. And again, some of these things more detail, we could talk about in a later video, but it's not as scary as you think. So let's just take one portion of this image. I don't like the greens in this image. So we're gonna adjust the greens. Now the easiest way to do that, just like with our white balance, there's a color picker here. So I can come grab that color and you see it's gonna give us the color down here right next to where it is. So let's pick one of the greens. You click and hold and now it's on a hue so I can change the hue of the greens to whatever I want, right? But that's not so much what I care about. One of the things I wanna do is desaturate the greens a little bit, because I feel like it's just too lively right now. So I'm gonna desaturate the greens, take the photo, the focus, the focus away from the greens in the image. Okay, and now let's make them a bit darker. I like kind of dark greens. And this is a very simple way to adjust your colors right here. Now the hue, gonna brighten them up just a, just a, a, a twitch. Yeah. Okay. Now I like how this looks a lot better than this. You see, it kind of makes her stand out a bit more. And then we can even, let's say we wanted to adjust and make her dress pop out just, just a touch, right? Go in, let's do it. Let this first, brighten her dress up, just a touch, hit saturation, up just a, just a bit to make it pop a little more. All right, now let's see the difference. Huge difference between the two. We're, we're, just the whole image itself shifted. You know, the whole image has shifted. Last tip, the devil's in the details. Well, what? Why does it have to be the devil? Nah, we're gonna change that. Never overlook the details. In this image here, yeah. I'm not used to being on the other side of the camera, so I look crazy. But there's a couple things in this image trying to get some headshots that you can clearly see need to be removed. So let's go ahead. I haven't done anything to this image yet. Let's go ahead and crop this image to get rid of things like this light over here. 
and possibly some of this stuff over here if I can crop it properly. Let's see. Uh, let's try to do a one to one. Give myself a little LinkedIn profile pic. All right, so most of those things go away immediately, right? Okay, now if I am doing a picture for LinkedIn profile, I may want to do a little cleanup on my face. Now, if you zoom in here, you can see got a little something going on right here as well as right here. Now, these things are super easy to clean up in Lightroom. If I was doing this in Photoshop, I'll probably go way more in depth and doing some stuff. It's not really that big of a deal, but let's go ahead and show you guys how easy it is to use the healing brush here in Lightroom. So let's say I want to clean this up here. All you gotta do is go to the healing brush band-aid right here. Cool trick, if you are having a higher time trying to spot different things you wanna fix, you can do visualize spots, and then you want to decrease the threshold, and this will show you the more significant spots. The more you increase, it's just gonna be like, come on now, we all, we all got something wrong with our face. That sounds terrible. But a lot of times this is super helpful if you want to have a little bit of assistance when you're trying to find some of those more fine tuning spots. However, we're only gonna clean up some small things here like right here. And you wanna make sure your brush is a little larger than the spot you're gonna clean. You tap, it's gonna sample from another spot. So anytime you see this, this the spot that you clicked on is what's being cleaned. The spot that is showing up next to it is a spot that it's sampling from. So it's taking the information from here and overlaying it here to kind of clean up that spot. So let's do this one as well. And Lightroom does a good job of figuring out where it needs to come from by itself. So let's do one more spot here. Let's also clean this up because this one's a, a big little, uh, big little. Nah, there's no such thing as big little pimples. But yeah, as a big, big issue right here, what was uh yeah look at that okay and as you see it's gone those spots are out of here right so you always have your reference here so if you ever want to go back in and clean stuff up you can so very simple now i will be going over some of the more advanced techniques in future videos to come like the tone curve some of the radial and linear filters as well as the brush tool but as for today i do hope that you are able to get a little bit more insight into how to use lightroom and also if you're a more seasoned veteran please put some tips down below that i may have skimped over so that people could come here not only learn from the video here but learn from the comment section below and if you're still here go ahead and slap that like why wow, slap that like that's not how Put your hands down. We're not slapping nothing around here. Go ahead, hit the like tab, hit slap. Why am I so violent today? Go ahead and uh, like the video if you like the video. As always, I gave you some tools to create. Now go be great. Peace. Why are you laughing? Stop laughing at me back now.